Last year in Melbourne, the most damaging story of Jeff Kennett's premiership came to a head in a drama that was made for television. Hello and welcome to the program. Tonight we had planned to bring you a story about poker machine king Bruce Matheson and a link with the Premier Geoffrey Kennett. An expose on the Kennett family's share dealings was pulled by Channel 7 minutes before it was due to go to air. However, we can't bring you that report because we have been instructed by senior management not to put the story to air. Why do you believe the story was pulled? To placate the Premier. Who do we have here this morning? We have an intruder. The episode was a graphic illustration of the political culture that's grown under Jeff ABC. Kennett's rule. Is this for local ABC or is for that awful bloody program? It's a culture that punishes criticism and dissent. In this culture, what the Premier says goes. The state is run like a business and accountability and transparency are sacrificed in the interests of results. It's a crash through a Approach and it certainly has achieved some great things in Victoria, but some pretty serious corners have been cut as well. The drama of that evening became as big a story as the share deal itself. We start tonight with the story of a former... While Seven later claimed it had acted for legal reasons, there were questions in Parliament about whether political pressure had been applied. As John Mort reports, Mackay is now under investigation by health and immigration officials. She's calling. Get some. Come on. Hurry up. TT2. TT2. We need Greg urgently on the floor or David Johnson. We need someone on the floor urgent. We need a first aider, Jill. He's ill on the floor. A bitter battle of the airwaves has erupted between Victorian Premier Jeff Kennett and the Channel 7 current affairs program Today Tonight. Melbourne presenter Jill Singer collapsed during last night's program after network management withdrew a story critical of the Premier's business dealings. The Victorian leader has denied applying political pressure to have the story spiked. Why do you think the story was pulled? I think there's little doubt that... Uh... The seven management thought it would do them too much damage in terms of the way they operate in Victoria. Monday night, a response from the Premier arrived on Today Tonight's fax machine. Mr. There was a public outcry and the story was run the next day. But the journalists responsible were later told their contracts would not be renewed. I think it's one of the most tawdry episodes that's occurred in television journalism in this country. He has now turned his attention to the booming economy of China. Those journalists now speak publicly for the first time, along with a former Kennett staffer who's told Four Corners he witnessed the share deal. I worked there, I must have had a couple of hundred conversations with him about the share market. But even as the results are reported, there are worries about how the business of government is being done. Increasingly, it's done out of the public's view. Contracts let without tender, deals done in secret under the shield of commercial confidentiality and laws changed to deny the public's right to know. What problems do you see associated with the lack of transparency in these processes? I think that hazards are enormous. The potential for government misfeasance, for negligence and for corruption as we've seen throughout history is very great. Now I'm not suggesting this is happening at the moment but there are enough instances to indicate that without the proper controls things can get out of control so it's important to maintain that system of checks and balances that we've built up over some hundreds of years. It would become the story of the year in Victoria but the journalists suspected almost from the beginning it was a story Channel 7 wasn't keen to tell. We were quite astonished at the resistance to us um, taking part in this, in this story. It was, it was made clear from the word go that uh, it wasn't a welcome report to be done on the program. And enormous pressure was applied for it not to get to air. Track them down here on 
The chairman and controlling shareholder of Channel 7 is the Perth businessman Kerry Stokes. His company Australian Capital Equity has enjoyed a lucrative relationship with the Kennett government. It began with an extraordinary deal during the privatisation of Victoria's power industry. This deal is a story in itself and one that helps explain how the staff at Channel 7 would later view the saga of Today Tonight. The deal involved the privatisation of the research and development arm of Victoria's State Electricity Commission. It's known as the Herman Research Laboratory or HRL. HRL had spent five years and more than $30 million of taxpayers' money developing a new way to make clean, cheap electricity from low-grade coal. Still in the experimental stage, the potential profits from this technology are huge. What sort of returns are we talking about? Millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions? Uh, it would be, um, if the technology is successful, as we obviously hope, um, it would be hundreds of millions of dollars, yes. We're talking sales all over the world to many countries? Sales all over the world, yes. Many countries would be involved in, in purchasing the technology. There was no tender for the privatisation of HRL and its research. The deal was rushed through on the last day of the financial year in 1994, the details not disclosed. It was finalised by Premier Kennett, who signed the documentation himself. We had to have it done by June 1994. Um, there was some confusion, I guess, in terms of what was happening with the industry and the, the Premier, when he heard that, in fact, that if uh, those uh, blockers, if you like, couldn't be cleared away, um, we might miss the deadline. Um, I understand he freed up the system and made it happen at the time. So, in effect, he facilitated the process. As Kerry Stokes tells it, it began when the Premier rang personally, inviting him to invest in Victoria. According to a glowing account by Mr Stokes in his company newsletter, the Premier said, just bring your money and come. If there's any red tape, we'll cut through it. It was a complicated deal, but amazingly, Mr Stokes recalled, after what seemed like a wave from Mr Kennett's magic wand, all the complexities disappeared. I take it Kerry Stokes was extremely impressed by the Premier's role in this. Yes, I've heard Kerry say that on a couple of occasions. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, yes. The attraction of the deal, apart from the potentially huge profits, was the fabulous tax benefits. Under a federal scheme to promote research and development, the money invested in the HRL research is refundable and tax deductible. Hence the rush to complete the deal by the end of the financial year. Even if the project fails, the investment syndicate led by Mr Stokes' company will get back all of its money, plus a guaranteed return of between 20 and 30 per cent. This scheme has since been abolished by the Federal Treasurer, who said it had more to do with tax minimisation than genuine research. What do you see as the benefits of this particular privatisation? Uh, the um, the short-term benefits, it's enabled a technology that wouldn't otherwise be developed, be developed and um, be put in place. What the investors had to pay the state for this gold mine has never been revealed. The government refused to release any details. It even changed the law to make privatisations in the power industry exempt from freedom of information. Shedding HRL meant the state was spared the cost of its research. But Four Corners has learned that apart from that saving, the taxpayer got virtually nothing from the deal. HRL was effectively given away. What the state got was a debenture, or corporate IOU, for $182 million. The catch is it's not payable for another 20 years and it may never be paid at all. Amazing as it seems, that decision is up to the investors. They don't have to pay anything unless they judge the research to be a commercial success. The problem is that we don't know how typical this is. There are hundreds and hundreds of deals and contracts being let every year. 
Professor Ari Freiberg believes HRL illustrates serious concerns about the way this government does its deals. I think there's an enormous culture of secrecy developing and the exclusion of all others other than the contracting parties is a fundamental misunderstanding of government. So this mask, this shield of commercial confidentiality is all part of this process of excluding the public because governments think they know what is best. Secrecy is danger. For Kerry Stokes and co, the HRL deal and Premier Kennett's role in it was a good story. He even suggested later to his staff at Channel 7 that they report it for Today Tonight. The chairman was telling us uh, how great he thought Jeff Kennett was to do business with. And it was suggested to us that we should do a story on this wonderful um, research and development uh, project into brown coal that had just been purchased from the state government. Today Tonight has identified a company listed on the Melbourne Stock Exchange as Sino Securities International. It was a year or so after this that the Today Tonight team came across a very different story. The story of the Kennett family's shares. The shares belong to my wife and there is no requirement for the assets to be listed. When the journalists at Today Tonight first discovered the Kennett's Guangdong shares last year, they believed there were issues of major public interest to be raised. But as the story developed, extraordinary pressure began to build. By now we were acutely aware of the undercurrents, if you like, uh, within the network of concern about this story. That's what made it so tense. We knew that by now we were effectively tippy-toeing through a minefield. But the story had taken on a life of its own by then. Four days before the share story was due for broadcast, a viewing of the program was held. Present were the journalists and lawyers and the network's managing director, Gary Rice. Well, they watched the story through. It was the first time that Gary Rice had seen it. He, uh, when it was finished, he said, and I remember the words as if they were yesterday, this story has the potential to do us enormous damage in Victoria not just our relationship with Tattersalls, but the whole way we conduct our business in Victoria. Namely that it could do great damage to commercial relationships, for starters with uh, the Tattersalls group who were involved in the all allocation of poker machines. But secondly, as Gary Rice kept putting it, um, in the way that we do business in this state, Gary Rice says he doesn't recall making those comments, but confirms he believed the story would not be helpful to the company. Tuesday, May 14th was the day the share story was due to go to air. It was extremely tense in the office that day. There were lawyers everywhere. The faxes were flying, the phone calls were flying. It was quite melodramatic by this stage. A team of lawyers had been involved in vetting the story. Channel 7's lawyers in Melbourne had been involved quite closely with the production of the story once it actually got to the editing process. Two senior counsel then saw the, the first edited version of it. The edited version was seen by Geoffrey Scher QC, who's a leading defamation barrister, and he also saw the final version. So it was legal very extensively. It was early evening, less than an hour before airtime when the phone rang. It was Premier Kennett. I was in my office and uh, a call came through. It was the Premier. And uh, the producer of the program, John Boland, took the call in my office because all the lawyers were still next door. It was a most astonishing conversation to overhear. Uh, the producer kept saying, mate, Jeff, you know we're mates, we go back a long way, we've known each other a long time. 
um, I'm instructed, I have my instructions to make sure you're happy. When the Premier was on the phone, we dropped everything and tuned in, but um, he, he seemed to be in a rage. I heard him a couple of times very loudly. It wasn't hard to hear because he seemed to be speaking at high volume. He seemed to keep saying, or, you know, go ahead, run it. I need a new house, was the quote that we kept hearing. I need a new house. I heard that said twice. Um, meaning what? Meaning, I assume, that if we did run the story, he'd sue us. And uh, that, at the very least, he expected the proceeds would buy him a new house. John Boland reported back that, that Jeff Kennett was ropeable about the story, the allegations that we were making, but that he wouldn't be interviewed, that uh, he kept saying he's ropeable about it, uh, that this appeared to be his main uh, response. Despite the Premier's anger, the story was completed and ready for air. The final conference call um, involved uh, Michael Lloyd-Jones, the corporate counsel. I finally said to Michael Lloyd-Jones, does this mean we can run the story? And he said, well, of course, there's no question about that. He even rang back a little while later to say, look, Warren, you know, I'm answerable to the shareholders. I have a responsibility to them, but there's no question of uh, the story not going to air. But a short while later, and just 20 minutes before airtime, the phone rang again and the bombshell was dropped. It was Michael Lloyd-Jones, Sydney network lawyer on the phone, and he said, speaking to Warren Wilton, the executive producer, he said, pull the story. He said, it's a management decision. And I said, well, why? You know, we've had it legal, we've had QCs look at it, we've been talking about it all day. Why, what's the reason? What, you know, why, why shouldn't it be shown? He said, well, I'm instructed to tell you that it's a management decision, it's not to be shown. All hell broke loose. There were lawyers yelling, journalists yelling. I must say that I felt just an overwhelming sense of numbness. I'm saying, what do I get on air and say? What can I possibly say about this? Tonight, we had planned to bring you a story about poker machine king Bruce Matheson and a link with the Premier Geoffrey Kennett. However, we can't bring you that report because we have been instructed by senior management not to put the story to air. We start tonight with the story of a former American Marine who used to... I felt the most enormous pressure building up in my head and pain, intense pain. In fact, as I was sitting there trying to read, it felt really like something had exploded in my head. I managed to get through to the end of the link and the pain was so intense I... I hit the floor. As John Mort reports, Mackay is now under investigation by health and immigration officials. The collapse of presenter Jill Singer prompted a public furor. The story went to air the following night, unchanged. It was the highest rating program ever on Today Tonight. In 1993, Premier Jeff Kennett touched down in the Chinese province of Guangdong to meet... Premier Kennett denied that he'd pressured Channel 7 to pull the story. He never did sue. Seven Chairman Kerry Stokes says he knew nothing of the report until after it was pulled, but was later appalled at how his journalists had behaved. Simple facts of the matter were, in regard to that particular item, is that those journalists didn't go through our corporate legal structure. When you're responsible for a company, there are procedures in place, and ABC help us have the same procedures. They chose to go to somebody outside of our uh, corporate law department for advice, and we were appalled to find that a story criticising uh, a Premier would possibly go to air without us having been made aware of any defamation responsibilities that would flow. The journalists' accounts of how the story was legally vetted have been independently verified by Four Corners. The story had been looked at by the Channel 7 lawyer, the lawyer they brought in from Cause, a barrister, another barrister, and then the person who's reputed to be Melbourne's finest defamation lawyer, that's um, Geoffrey Shirk, you see. 
By the end of last year, seven journalists from the Today Tonight office in Melbourne had been informed their services were no longer required. That particular group of people and that program failed to perform. We gave it a very long time. Well, I think it, uh, they just wanted all the people who'd been involved in it off the premises. In the end, I, I suppose they decided that they wanted to take a different direction with the program and uh, we were not part of it. For a politician to tame the media is a fairly, fairly attractive proposition. He's been quite brazen about doing that down here. It's, had a, it's worked profoundly in his favour. Uh, I think it's very difficult now to report anything uh, that is even constructively critical uh, of this Premier. Um, he, he has them intimidated out there and uh, Channel 7 was certainly no exception.